government should uh, take against the employment in Portugal? Yes, I think the starting point uh, today in Portugal is that you have been following policies at least since 2011 to try to deal with uh, Portugal's fiscal difficulties. And the fact of the matter is these have given rather negative employment uh, results. We see a situation in which Portugal has lost one in seven jobs since the crisis began and where the high levels of unemployment, around 17%, don't really show uh, signs of, of going down. Uh, we're talking now about economic growth coming back rather timidly next year. But the fact of the matter is, without a change of direction, high unemployment is going to stay in Portugal. And I think Portuguese people want something of a change uh, of direction now. What do you think can be changed? Well, I think the first thing to recognize is that rushing to solve the fiscal problems bring down the deficits very, very quickly and, of course, there are pressures on Portugal to do that. Uh, it can be self-defeating. Uh, we have seen already that Portugal, despite the enormous efforts of the people, hasn't been able to meet the targets uh, for fiscal uh, deficit reduction. Maybe it's time to take a longer-term perspective on fiscal reduction, and that can be done by investing uh, in areas where we need to invest to maintain and create jobs. In the very uh, medium term, even in a couple of years, having that more expansive attitude will actually help to bring down the fiscal deficits. So don't go too quickly. Measure the progress in a way which is job-centered. I think we have to turn the focus to jobs and to growth. And the government have to interview? For you think so? Well, I think this certainly requires the government to consider very carefully uh, the stance that it is, is taking. Um, what we're seeing, of course, in Portugal, as I've indicated, is, is, is a very substantial loss of jobs and, of course, uh, a reduction of living standards, a reduction of social protection coverage as well. And in these circumstances, it's extremely difficult for economies to grow. And you're only going to pay your debts if you have an economy which is growing. Now, of course, we're seeing uh, a very positive uh, evolution in Portuguese exports. We're seeing a growth in exports, and that's obviously a good thing. But I think on current trends, that export growth alone uh, is not going to be enough. Uh, Portugal needs to look inwards. It needs to look at its own labor markets. It needs to look at demand in its own economy as well. And you believe that employment next year can fall two uh, percentage points? Well, I think if we had a package of measures which look to getting investment going, getting credit lines uh, moving to small and medium-sized enterprises, who complain, many small and med medium-sized enterprises, which are perfectly viable enterprises, simply do not have access to credit. So we need to look at the financial sector. That's one piece of the story. Uh, secondly, I think we have to look um, at labor markets. We need to do better to help those people who are either in danger of Much losing more their jobs. flexibility? I don't think flexibility is necessarily the answer. We've seen already a substantial amount of reform introduced in labor markets. Uh, and of course, we've seen dismissal procedures reviewed. But I think really we need to be supporting those people who are either vulnerable on labor markets or out of the labor market. Now, young people classically uh, are the most vulnerable uh, in labor markets. I know that youth unemployment uh, in uh, Portugal is up to around 37%. The ILO, uh, for many uh, months, has been arguing, as indeed the European Commission has been, for the introduction of youth uh, guarantee schemes. These would be schemes that would offer unemployed young people uh, the option of further training and education or work experience or a job. We need to get these people back into labor markets. Now, that sounds expensive, and it certainly costs money. Uh, the ILO's estimates are it would cost just over 1 billion euros uh, to put in place a youth guarantee scheme uh, in Portugal. Now, European funding is available for that, but I think the important thing is that this needs to be seen as an investment in young people, not simply a cost. It pays off very quickly. And I have to say to you that when I see the opinion surveys that say nearly one in five people would like to emigrate under current circumstances from Portugal, I think you realize the urgency of doing something quite different to keep your young people, to keep your talent in the country.
in the long term, this is the future of Portugal. And I think Portugal today needs to take care of these people and to act to help them. Uh, you talk about the banks. Do you think that small and medium enterprises need funding, much more funding from the banks? Look, uh, Portugal is an economy with many small and medium-sized enterprises, many self-employed people. So it's a very important part of the Portuguese economy. And all the evidence shows two things, that small and medium-sized enterprises need bank credit as a normal part of their lives, with a crisis or without a crisis. They're very dependent on the banks. They don't have their own resources. And all of the evidence shows uh, that these enterprises complain very much in Portugal that they are constrained, that they don't have access to credit, or that credit is very expensive. Um, I think uh, interest rates for small and medium-sized enterprises in Portugal, for example, is more than twice as high than in Germany, for example. And in those circumstances, it's extremely difficult for these enterprises, which should be a motor for growth and for recovery, to play the role uh, that they should do. So you really have to get the financial section right, the financial sector right. It's been at the heart of the causes of the crisis. It needs to be also a player in the solution to the crisis. What about uh, austerity? We should stop it? Listen, Portuguese people have been asked to make extraordinary efforts to deal with this crisis. We've seen it in um, minimum wage uh, uh, adjustments. We've seen it in social protection and pension adjustments. And these really hurt people. I think that people expect two things when they're in a crisis. I think they're ready to make a sacrifice. I think they're ready to join in an effort to get out of the crisis. In return, they ask for two things. Firstly, they ask for a fair distribution of the costs of the adjustment. Unfortunately, and this is true not only of Portugal, but throughout Europe, I think the costs of dealing with the crisis have fallen very heavily on the poorest and most vulnerable in our societies. So I do think that the minimum wage, for example, in Portugal, it looks very low by international comparisons. I don't think Portugal should believe that it will uh, become competitive and successful by pushing down wage levels further. That's not what the evidence shows. I also think that social protection is a very important part of dealing with the crisis. Again, it's not only protecting people in very difficult circumstances, although it must do that. It's also a motor to get people out of the crisis. If you give people um, a, a safety net, they're able to adjust to change. They're able to continue. If you take away social protection or reduce it to sub-minimal levels, I think you get people locked into situations which they can't get out of. And the that solution. can only prolong the crisis, not solve it. The solution passed by a consensus uh, in the parliament and with the social partners. Do you think so? I absolutely agree. Um, Portugal has, I think, a number of assets. One of its great assets is a strong tradition of social dialogue. That is to say, the government working with trade unions and with employers. Now, I've watched Portugal over the last three years. I know that um, there have been a great deal of tension in that partnership. But you still have in Portugal, I think, this tendency for workers and employers to sit and to negotiate and work together. I have to say that's better, it's more positive than I would find in some other European countries. I think Portugal needs to take advantage of that national asset because that is what it is. So I agree that um, there is a need for dialogue. But there's also a need for collective bargaining. I think one of the statistics which is particularly worrying about the crisis in Portugal is that the coverage of collective bargaining, the number of workers who are covered by collective agreements, has gone down very, very sharply, very sharply. Now, Attempts have been made to reform collective bargaining, to move it to the enterprise level, to make it produce more efficient economic outcomes. But the actual result is that collective bargaining has diminished at an alarming rate. I think Portuguese people should be worried about that. Collective bargaining is part of the institutional fabric of your society. It's also a very effective way of distributing income in a way which is regarded as fair 
and accepted by the population. I think that we need to look again at those changes which have reduced collective bargaining very sharply. So, uh, in general, what are the solutions for uh, Portuguese uh, crisis? Well, I think it's putting jobs and growth at the centre of the agenda, understanding that jobs and growth are, in the end, the way out of the fiscal problems. Um, then I think, as you've just mentioned, uh, social dialogue. I think involving all of the actors in constructing exit strategies is very important. I think Portugal needs to invest in its own futures. Everybody knows that there are strong pressures on Portugal, from the financial markets, from international actors, but surely the experience uh, since 2011 is that you know, the end of the tunnel is not really in sight. Even with modest growth on the horizon for next year, unemployment along the current line is going to remain very high. I think it's time to stop, I think it's time to reflect, and I think it's time to move in a slightly different direction, which I repeat, would not mean that Portugal abandons its financial responsibilities, it just tackles them, I think, in a slightly more positive way, in a way which will be to the benefit of all Portuguese people in the medium and long run. Do you think uh, the government failed in the um, austerity, too much austerity here in Portugal? I wouldn't want to comment on the specifics of the Portuguese national situation, but what I think is very, very clear is that the um, approach to the crisis in the programme countries in Southern Europe and Ireland has clearly given too much emphasis to short-term austerity, to restoring, to trying to restore fiscal balances. And I think that's recognised not only by the ILO, I think it's recognised by institutions such as the International Monetary Fund, who said already 18 months ago, look, the multiplier effects of austerity, the extent to which austerity feeds through to loss of jobs, this is a much more powerful mechanism than we ever thought at the beginning. And I always say, if a doctor... In the domestic demand, inclu including... Absolutely. I always say if a doctor suddenly discovers that the medicine he's giving you is more powerful than he thought already, then you should reduce the dose of the medicine. And I think austerity needs to be eased in the same way. And all of the experience bears that out.